I don't know how much I can reveal, but this last season, you know, let's just say there's there's a boiling point with his relationship with, with Nacho. And you see that, you know, all the way from their first interaction. Today, I'm here with Mr. Jeremiah Bitsui from AMC's Dark Winds. Terrific, terrific uh, uh, thriller, crime thriller series uh, that's, that's, that's airing right now. Uh, Jeremiah, thank you so much for being here today. I really appreciate you taking time. Hey, Stephen. Thanks for having me, man. Absolutely. So, so Dark Winds, I, I, I'd love... Uh, for you to give our, our watchers a little background sort of on your character. I, I don't want to give too much away. I know yeah. that you and I both know everything that happens, but so far we're, we're only on the third episode. And okay. yeah. I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to spill some beans if I'm not careful. So if you yeah. wouldn't mind, I'd love for you to give viewers a little background on your character and, and, and the show. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, I can't, I can't spill the beans either or else I'm sure I'll get in trouble with AMC. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little little motivation there. Uh, yeah, so my character, Hosky, is a character deeply conflicted, kind of uh, layers of, of trauma, things that, that we do see. It's very realistic to what we see kind of back home. Um, a lot of the trauma goes untreated, so this is, this is kind of uh, what bubbles up from it. So I, I think of it like a multi-layered cake, like you have his childhood which is kind of the first layer of trauma he went to catholic school um a lot of these boarding schools back in back in the good old days they would um you, you couldn't speak your native language and um if they, they were very uh, let's say they, they reinforced in in a very tough way um behavior and um and assimilation so his character had deep trauma from the abuse growing up and, and go, having to go through that which was again, very authentic, very real. Yeah. And then the next layer is uh, him then going into Vietnam. So rolling all of that trauma and kind of PTSD and, and then coming home and not really, you know, that, that battlefield and, and that, um, that state of mind that he's still in rolling that into to his, his everyday life, which back home, there's um, a group called the, um, uh, the Buffalo society. And he takes that lead and just runs with it and has a plan and has specific objectives, but keep in mind, like this is kind of a ticking time bomb. His character is, is dealing with a whole lot and never got treated. So on, on a more social side, you know, it's definitely something that's prevalent, I think within our culture and within American culture you know, young men who don't really speak their feelings or ever get treated. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. It is very much uh, a really interesting way of, of addressing that long-term, you know, uh, uh, situation. And, and gosh, what a complex character. I mean, you just really did a lot there to sum up Hosky. And, and in the most recent episode, what we kind of see more revealing is kind of his um his his more militant uh, uh behavior starts to kind of emerge we kind of see a little bit a glimpse of that we see kind of the money moving and and it's it's interesting because you feel like he is incredibly sincere and and i, I think that's one of the things i appreciate about the character is what he's doing in overall sort of is you would say, well, this is unethical, but he's got some really good points, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and yeah. I, I'm curious, you know, did you, did you kind of pick up on a lot of that going into the, the role before taking on the role? Did you kind of see some of that in the, in sort of the character outline? Yeah, so absolutely. Uh, as far as, you know, Growing up on the res, I, I grew up on the res up until the age of 10. And um, I think it's it's a different, it's it's much different now than Navajo Nation with, with the problems that are being faced and uh, the socioeconomic issues, you know. So, so but those are more, um, uh, that's, that's more objective. I guess the subjective part, the, the part of his character and the minutia of, of everything that's, that's melding together, it's... Um, 
it, it's relatable in the sense that I think at this particular period of time, there's, there's so much going on. Like, I mean, I'm talking about in our everyday life currently here in America, I think there's so much going on and, and to be um, where he is, I could relate in a sense that there's um, all of these things that you're trying to deal with. And for, for me, there was so much of my personal life adapting new life, new things. And, and sometimes it, it's hard to just check in and, and feel where you really at, you know? And, and so on the militant side, uh, definitely, you know, he has the training from, from being a veteran. He has that formal training and he's implementing that into this Buffalo society and, and with his partner uh, that they're, they're very harshly kind of creating this crux, which isn't really about money. Uh, money is, is not an objective of, Hey, we're going to go and sit pina coladas and sit um, right, right. on a beach somewhere. You know, they, they have a very deep mission of what they're trying to accomplish and, and vengeance as well. So, you know, they're, I, I uh, my uncle was Russell Means, the um, uh, one of the founders of the American Indian Movement, and so mm-hmm. I, I grew up knowing a lot of that. And um, I don't know if I can if I can say this, but uh, you know, there's times where I would be playing hide and seek in his house. I guess it's widely known that it'd be fuses and uh, you know things that were probably other things that were locked away. Um, but he was he was definitely militant and and military minded in that sense, mm. and uh, it and had a lot of similarities. So I would say you know there's there's things that you draw from as an actor, real life, and then there's things that you of course can kind of allow yourself to to create brand new and fresh. Right on, and and I guess uh, connecting to that real life to to fiction were you familiar with the the Lee Porn and Chi books prior to this or was that was that new to you yeah and actually I, I remember watching the original Dark Winds with uh, Lou Diamond Phillips yeah and, I was gonna say yeah, yeah back in the early 90s yeah yeah and so wet you know Wes uh, Wes Studi a, a good friend and and um I I'd uh, known him now for for a number of years and so um we had a high bar you know, um, for uh, all I can say is, is for Lou Diamond Phillips not being Navajo and actually doing what he did with our language. He mm-hmm. did a pretty, a pretty great job in, in accomplishing that. But um, yeah, absolutely. The books are definitely um, they're, uh, they're, they're pinnacle stories in the sense that it's mm-hmm. uh, original storytelling, uh, of course, fictional, fic- fictitious storytelling from our backyard. Mm-hmm. So a lot of the areas that, that he speaks of, um, the relationships, there's, there's a lot of, um, realism to, to that and the locations, but at the same time it's fiction, you know? So I think that's the part that I want to make sure that everyone has, has a good understanding that it's not, uh, directly related or, or portraying our culture, but more so it's, it's a, it's a narrative, uh, vision from our culture. Right on. Well, listen, I, it's a terrific series. I mean, Dark Winds and and it only gets better from here. I, I, I you know, we, we know we got to be really careful, but man, it just continues to get better and better and better. And and following all the characters and seeing how all, all of that uh, pans out in the end, man. Um, um, I'd love to, if it's OK, before our time is up, I switch to uh, another AMC series of yours. You're the yeah. AMC go to guy, Jeremiah. It's <laughs> like we got a new AMC series. We need somebody who's like a really complex bad guy. Just call Jeremiah. <laughs> I need a, I'm a company. Man. I need a I need an office with a, a villain um, the door tag. That's what it is. Yeah. Resident villain. Um, yeah, so, resident. so Better Call Saul, uh, Breaking Bad. You play Victor. Fans will know. And um, I, man, when it comes to revisiting the character and, and, and Victor coming back, I was having a discussion with my editor, actually, about um, the nature of Victor in Better Call Saul as compared to Breaking Bad. And my question was, do you think Victor is worse? And I don't mean worse as in like, just more cruel or, or because we already know what happens to Victor in Breaking Bad. So my thought process was, 
he can be as bad as he wants to be in this show. And like, there's no real, like, we already know what the ramifications are down the road. I would yeah. love to hear from you what your thoughts are on, on that comparison. Like coming into Victor, did you intend to play him any specific way this time around? Was it freeing to know mm-hmm. <laughs> what was what was already coming? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, in a sense, it's, you know, um, uh, uh, Victor and and Tyrus, you know, you kind of have one which uh, Tyrus is is definitely, you know, he he's more, um, you know, he, he carries the words across. He gets some of, um, you know, he gets some of that across. And you have Victor, who's really kind of, you know, he's tactical, he's thoughtful, he's thinking these things through. Uh, but at, to answer your question, at the, at the beginning of it, I, I think that, you know, I, I found um, Victor kind of finding himself in a place where he's, I don't know, maybe maybe a little bit more new on the team, maybe somewhat um, elevating in his status, which he's mm-hmm. which he's happy about. Mm-hmm. And then by the end, you know, where he's, I, there's a, there's a vicious part of of him where I feel like he, he's he's done all this and he kind of revels in it to, to a certain extent. And by the end, um, you know, and I, I, I don't know how much I can reveal, but this last season, you know, let's just say there's, there's a boiling point with his relationship with, with Nacho. And you see that, you know, all the way from their first interaction up until now, which he's very, um, he, he, he enjoys it. He, he enjoys what's, you know, what he's doing, you know, this is his, his ideal job, his dream job, if you will. But I think the transition into Breaking Bad is Victor gets to a point where he's just, he's stalemate. There's no more moving up. Um, you know, Mike is, is, um, is Gus's guy. And, um, you know, he, he feels like that when there's no battles or anything that's keeping him busy or, or this crazy drama or, or rivalry, he, he gets a little bit tired of, of just checking around corners. So I think that's really where Victor is and that's where, where he's going. All right. Fair enough. Well, listen again, another great series, uh, breaking, uh, breaking, uh, better call Saul. Um, uh, Jeremiah, thank you so much for taking time to chat today. Dark winds on AMC, AMC plus, uh, Sunday nights. And, and there's, there's four, four or five more episodes until the, the end of the season. So it's getting yeah. good. Tune in. Yeah. It's cool. <laughs> we, right when we end, um, Dark Winds, we start Better Call Saul back up again. So watch both. Watch him. You know, uh, we, we got some great things coming up. And it's Just exciting. Jeremiah on loop. Yeah, yeah. It seems like it. getting tired of myself. <laughs> Thank you, Stephen. Well, we're not. Thank you very much. Have a great day, Jeremiah.